a swirling wind. I smelt us somewhere lying under here. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like getting shot today. It's Mozambique, and Rigger's Ken Jorgensen's here with shooting instructor Il Ling Nu for Buffalo the hard way with a revolver. And they'll be hunting in the concession operated by Zambezi Delta Safaris in Mozambique, now one of Africa's prime hunting areas with dozens of species, including big buffalo. When I first started hunting Cape Buffalo, I'd heard that Mozambique was opening up, and I'd heard more and more and more about Mozambique, and it got to the point where that is the country that I want to go to, and here I am. Here at the camp of Zambezi Delta Safaris, it's really unique with places I've been to in Africa because this is kind of a traditional camp with the tents, and I find that very intriguing because that's what the old safaris were like. I've really been looking forward to hunting with Ken. We've, we've hunted together before, but of course never something like this. And he's part of the big reason that I'm a handgun hunter to begin with. Yuling and I hunted together on a hog hunt in California two or three years ago. And I think that kind of helped get her hooked on this. My first handgun animal. Is that right? Yeah, it's great. I'm really, really glad to have Ken along because he is a hunting pal, he's a shooting buddy, and he's my backup. Ken and Il Ling prepared for Africa at the Gunsight Training Center. I work here as an instructor, a range master. I've been here for about eight years. So we have a very robust hunting curriculum here. Good, nicely done. With a charging animal, very often we have only one shot, so it's got to be good. The anatomy of the Cape Buffalo is designed for protection from the massive shoulder columns to the overlapping ribs and inch-thick hide, a shooter needs a powerful round in order to reach its vitals. Hunting dangerous game, firstly, is a very serious business. Hunting it with a handgun definitely takes dedication and a lot of training. An added role the PHs of Zambezi Delta have taken on is patrolling for poachers. Uh, Enter poaching is a huge part of our effort here in Cotarde 11. It is the end of the season and as a result uh, we start seeing a huge upsurge in the poaching. Licensed hunting fights poaching in Africa two ways, by catching poachers and creating a monetary incentive for locals to protect the game. Uh, we managed to catch 16. These chaps have six bags of dried meat with them, snares, spears and uh, gin traps too, which they set in the bush. Not only a danger to animals, but a danger to the local population. In Mozambique, buffalo tracking conditions are just right for hunter Il Ling Nu and PH Mark Haldane. Driving down the road, we cut a track. It looked quite fresh, so we immediately got out and started following up on it. Lovely soil for tracking now. It's yeah. perfect. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this. Here. And now you have some sun too. Yeah. The trackers noticed that it seemed to be a pretty good herd, so we kept going and kept going. Well, this is a herd of cows and youngsters. Five or six cows, and uh, I don't see the bulls track. Uh, it's just, I think this buffalo has gone, gone up to the other, the other pan. Okay. There's no water here, of course, but at the other one there is. Okay. We'll go over and look there. We're going to keep following this herd. We think that they've headed towards water now. Man, that's big, eh? <laughs> we came across this massive single bull track, a bull all by himself. And so now Craig and John are out trying to figure out exactly where he might have been going and what he's up to. And Buffalo from here to beyond where you are, Ellen, mm -hmm. all moving towards the forest. Johnny thinks it's a good idea to go look at these buffalo. It's early enough in the day. If we don't find a decent bull in here, we can always go back to, okay. go back to the others. But this fellow is definitely worth a looking at. We um, ended up going through the forest, which is actually extremely thick. 
vine laden with lots of deadfalls. So half the time you're stooping over and the other half the time you're kind of lifting your knees trying to negotiate this stuff. So it was a little bit difficult. We bumped this nice herd of buffalo that we've been looking for. I think let's follow him. We may find a, a bull was hiding in the back where I couldn't see him. Horn length on a buffalo is not necessarily the best measure of age. The real sign of maturity is the boss, the horn covering the head. A young bull's boss will be soft, but in an old bull, the two halves of the boss will grow tightly together with no hair between. It worked about as good as it works. Yeah, God, those were perfect. There was a good bull in there. We saw him briefly once, but then he ducked into the herd and we never saw him again. We did get close enough, about 35, 40 yards, to see another really nice bull, but a little bit soft. But boy, what a great experience to be able to get that close. We'll follow the side of this river back to camp. We'll see more. In the concession that we're in, there are basically two areas where we'll find buffalo. One is kind of a dense, thick, Sunni forest, as they call it. And the other is floodplain and swamp. We've done a lot of work in the forest area, and it's just proving to be a little bit too difficult with the dead leaves, swirling winds in there that make it just about impossible for us to be able to execute a good stock and approach. So we've decided to try the swamp. To try to beat the heat and beat the buffalo, we actually started out from fly camp at four o'clock in the morning. Two Argos, and we're gonna go into this swamp area and try to locate those buffalo herds that we know are there. Working with those Argos, it's better than walking, but not by far. But the ground is so uneven. Not only that, but there was a recent burn that went through there. And so there was still smoldering bits of papyrus everywhere you could look. And because of all this wonderful smoke that was created by the, the recent fires, the sunrise was unbelievably beautiful. It 
took us about two hours or so to get to the point where we found some spoor. Along the way, we lost a track off of one of the Argos. There you go, there you go. Okay. The other one got stuck in a hippo waller. It's been quite an adventure. So we park the Argos a safe distance, and then we start following up and tracking. These floodplains are very, very difficult to walk. At one point, we just had to stop. We saw this collection of storks, pelicans, and other birds that were just clumped near a body of water. That's incredible to see. Huh? Look down there. That's all fish that you can see. It's a bed of catfish. Huh? Oh, it's the end of the dry season now. And um, these fish have all come downstream and they finally congregated here. They trapped in the shallow mud. And these pelicans and marabou stalks behind us are about to make short work of them. John is determined to catch himself one. This is enough to drive a fisherman crazy. This is a tough time of year to hunt buffalo. We are the last hunt of the year. The buffalo are smart and wily. The vegetation is low, which gives us great visibility, but of course it gives the buffalo the same. As we went along, it was getting hotter and hotter, and it got hot from, I'd say, about 8 o'clock onward. By 8 o'clock, it was well into the 90s. By 8.30, 8.45, we all figured it was over 100. By 9 o'clock, it was about 110 degrees. That was when we decided that we'd better go to a different location, almost two hours away by Argo, to look for another herd, our last chance of the day. The swamps of the Zambezi Delta, Mozambique, and handgun hunter Il Ling Nu and Ruger's Ken Jorgensen are after buffalo at last light. We take the Argos, we go to another location where we think we've seen some birds, and sure enough, there's a herd there. It's actually a much bigger herd than we expected it to be. And Craig thinks that we can get in close enough. It's got to be somewhere around 30 yards for me to take a shot with my revolver. We decide we're gonna stalk this herd. It's our last chance of the day. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. It's now or never. Have a look here on the left. Here's this large herd of buffalo. Okay. This is not going to work for us. Okay. I could hear some here on the right hand side. Here they are here. I think okay. we're going to go for these buffalo rather. This large group are all going to move across to the left. We'll continue up on the side of the papyrus. Fortunately, our PH Craig peeked over the papyrus patch that we were in and noticed that a small group was kind of lagging behind this main herd that we had been watching. It's going to work out well. The buffalo are coming across the front of us. The bull that we're going to shoot is approximately over here. Okay. We're going to need to do some crawling to get into position though, so that we're not shooting through the vegetation. Okay.
watch him, watch him. If you can shoot him again. His leg's broken. Can you see your bull? No. There, he's looking away. Do you, you see one, two, three uh, big bull walking? There, he's looking away from us. All right, on the far right now. Uh, hang on, hang on. He's covered again. Right, I see him. Take the shot when you're ready. He's all on his own. Okay, I got it. Side. Perfect, perfect. You hit him exactly behind the leg. That's great. Eyes down. Nice. Excellent. <sighs> Good shooting. Right. Good shooting. I got on the sticks with the revolver cocked as quietly as I could. At the shot, the entire herd looked around and then moved away about 20 yards. Our buffalo was hit well. He stepped out to the right. The rest of the herd stepped to the left. I had my shot. The Super Red Hawk was right on. I couldn't believe it. I had done it. A Cape Buffalo with a revolver. In the beginning, it was just an idea. You know, can we go take a buffalo with a 454 Casul? I must say, I was not all that confident in the power of the bullet or the, the load, but seeing what it did to the buffalo, I'm definitely a, a convert. Deling with her training and the right product, uh, right ammunition, it could all come together and do something that we'd kind of visualized months earlier. It was a really a sense of accomplishment in the end.